why in the world? So Adam and Eve are tempted by the snake. They eat the fruit. They wake up. They realize they're naked. They realize that they're vulnerable. They realize the future. They realize they're going to die. They realize that they have to work. It accounts for difficulty in conception and the fall of humankind from unconscious paradise. Okay, that makes sense. What about the knowledge of good and evil? What in the world does that mean? The Mesopotamians believed that human beings were made out of the blood of Kingu, who was the worst monster that Tiamat, who was the goddess of chaos, could imagine and then produce. So their idea was that whatever it was about humanity, there was something deeply, 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 demonically flawed. So that's their conception. And it's out of that same milieu that these stories emerge. So what does opening your eyes and realizing your vulnerability have to do with the knowledge of good and evil? And really, I thought about that. I really thought about that. I got to tell you, I thought about that for like 20 years because I knew there was something there that I could not put together. And at the same time, I was, I was reading things. I'm going to tell you something truly awful. And so if you need a trigger warning, you're, you're getting one. And, <laughs> and believe me, I do not give trigger warnings lightly. So I'm going to tell you something you will never forget. So this is what Unit 731 used to do in, Ch in China. It's a Japanese unit during the First Second World War. Right? As far as I can tell, they did the most horrific things that were done to anyone during World War II. And that's really something. So this is what they did. They took their prisoners, and they would put them in a position so that their arms would freeze solid. And then they would take them outside and pour hot water over their arms. And then they would repeat that till the flesh came off the bones. And they were doing that to investigate the treatment of frostbite for soldiers. Now you can look up Unit 731 if you want to have nightmares. So that's Unit 731. That's human beings. Someone thought that up, and then people did it. Well, that's knowledge of good and evil. Here's the, here's the key, man. You know you're vulnerable. No other animal knows that. You know what hurts you because you're vulnerable. And now that you know what hurts you, you can figure out what hurts someone else. And as soon as you know what hurts someone else and you can use that, you have the knowledge of good and evil. Well, it's a pretty good trick that the snake pulled because it doesn't look like it's exactly the sort of thing that we might have wanted if we would have known what the consequence was. But as soon as a human being is self-conscious and aware of his own nakedness, then he has the capacity for evil. And that is, that's introduced into the world right at that point. And here's the rest of the story. So there's the snake, right? And you're some tree-dwelling primate, and the snake eats you. And that sucks, so let's, like, let's watch out for the damn snakes. And then you think, well, wait a minute. Your brain grows, and you think, wait a minute. Well, there's not just a snake. There's where snakes live. Why don't we just get the hell out of the tree and go hunt down the snakes and get rid of them? So those are sort of like potential snakes. And so the snake becomes potential snake, and it's the same circuit that you're using to do this thinking. And then you get rid of the damn snakes. It's like St. Patrick chases them out of Ireland. No more snakes. Everything's paradise. It's like, no, 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 that's not, that's not how it works at all. Well, now you've got the human snakes. You're a tribe. You've got tribal enemies. You've got to de de defend yourself against the human snakes, right? So maybe your empire expands, and you get rid of all the human snakes. And then what happens? Well, they start to grow, develop inside. It's like you get rid of all the external enemies and you make a big city and all of a sudden there's enemies that pop up inside because the snake isn't just the snake in the garden and the snake isn't just the possible snake and the snake isn't just the snake that's your enemy. The snake is your friend, right? Because your friend can betray you. And then it's even worse than that because you can betray you. And so even if you get rid of all the outside snakes, you've got an inside snake and God only knows what it's up to. And that's why the bloody Christians associated the snake in the Garden of Eden with Satan. It's unbelievably brilliant. Because you've got to think, what's the enemy? Well, it's the snake. Fair enough. But, you know, that's good if you're a tree-dwelling primate. But if you're a sophisticated human being, you know, with six million years of additional evolution, and you're really trying to solve the problem of what it is that's the great enemy of mankind, well, it's the human propensity for evil, right? As such. Well, that's the figure of Satan. That's what that figure means. Just like there's a logos that's the truth that speaks 
order out of chaos at the beginning of time. There's an antithetical spirit, the hostile brother. That's Cain to Abel, which we'll talk, to, talk about next week. That's doing exactly the opposite. That's motivated by absolutely nothing but malevolence and the willingness to destroy. And it has every reason for doing so. And that's what's revealed in the next story, in Cain and Abel, in one paragraph. The first glimmerings of that outside of the strange insistence by the Christian mystics, let's say, on the identity between the snake in the Garden of Eden and the author of all evil himself.